Hey everybody, happy Saturday night. I um, want to talk to you about a very important topic tonight, which is how to deal with anger and irritability. Um, if you have this tendency, then being in the middle of a pandemic is not going to help it. If, if you have this tendency, losing your job, it's not going to help it. Or being isolated at home is not going to help it. And so this is a historically stressful time and learning to manage your emotions is just a critical skill that all of us need to have. Now, some people, they will just never lose their temper. They would just rather die first. Um, but other people, their temper has really followed them throughout their lives. And one of the things that many people don't know is it actually could have been the fall that you had when you were six. That is one of the major reasons. Um, and, and nobody knows it. Why? Because they end up seeing psychologists uh, or psychiatrists who never look at the brain. And so they completely miss that the fall off the porch um, when they were six, contributed to some of the domestic violence situations they've been in. And over the last 40 years, last 30 years where I've been scanning people, um, I've had the opportunity to scan about a thousand convicted felons, um, well over a hundred murderers, and they have brain problems. And the incidence of traumatic brain injury is very high. Um, I remember this one case where I got to lecture in normal Illinois. Love that. I got to go to the normal grocery store. I was interviewed on the normal radio station. I went to the normal post office. And I finally got to meet normal women. Being from California, that was not common. And, um, and then after my lecture and I got home, one of the psychologists there referred um, a man by the name of Wayne to me. He had just been arrested for domestic violence, had broken his wife's arm. He was suicidal. He hated himself. And the psychologist was just trying to look for more answers on, you know, why did his temper um, continually get the best of him or the worst of him. And when I scanned him, he had clear damage to the left front side of his brain and his left temporal lobe. Now, I've seen that literally thousands of times. And so I asked him, I said, when did you have a brain injury? And he said, I don't remember one. And it's one of the big lessons from my life. In fact, if you go, hey, Daniel, single most important thing you've learned from 160,000 scans is mild traumatic brain injury ruins people's lives. And nobody knows about it because most mental health professionals never look at the brain. Anyways, um, so he said he didn't have one and that's what we hear all the time. And so we ask again, are you sure? Have you ever fallen off out of a tree, fell off a fence, dove into a shallow pool, fell down a flight of stairs? Did you play sports? and repeatedly hit your head in soccer or football? Um, have you been in a car accident? And it was no, 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 no. I'm sorry I lied to you. What? He said I was six years old. 
I was playing outside on the porch and I was standing on the rail and it was raining and it was wet and I slept and I fell six feet head first into a pile of bricks. I was unconscious for about an hour. I was taken to the emergency room. I was hospitalized for a number of days. And ever since I can remember, I've had problems with my temper. And on a medicine to stabilize his temporal lobe, and also a low carbohydrate, high protein diet, a ketogenic like diet. There's been no more incidences over the last 10 years, and he's still married. How do you know unless you look? And um, I've been talking a little bit, I just finished my book for next year. Uh, called Your Brain is Always Listening. Um, Your brain is always listening, and I have the dragons from the past, so that's um, section one. Um, I have the they, them, and other dragons. That's the impact of other people on you. I have bad habit dragons and scheming dragons. There's a lot of dragons in the book, but... um, In the first part of the dragons from the past, there's the angry dragon. And so I just want to share a little bit about how to get your temper under control. And the origin of the angry dragon can be brain damage that you are unaware of. I did the big NFL study at a time when the NFL was struggling with the whole issue of traumatic brain injury in football. Um, In large part, um, my first NFL player, Anthony Davis, the Hall of Fame running back from USC, he's called the Notre Dame killer, um, because in 1972 he scored six touchdowns against the University of Notre Dame. Um, When he was 54, his memory was not good. In fact, he said he had OCD because he kept going back to check to see if he locked the house. Um, he had periods of confusion, and his temper was terrible. He said, you know, I put myself in situations where if I wasn't as big as I was, I could have been hurt. Either way, I'm embarrassed for myself. And when we scanned him, he had hurt the function of his left temporal lobe. And we put Anthony on a rehabilitation program multiple vitamin, fish oil, brain boost. Um, I put them together in a product called Brain and Body Power Max. Um, He's taken that literally now for 13 years and his brain is remarkably better. Isn't that cool to have a better brain even 13 years later? So when you think of what causes it, a past head injury is possible. Also, if you didn't sleep, you're more likely to have temper problems. If you didn't eat, um, this is a great study where they took 107 couples and they measured their blood sugar before bed. And then they gave them voodoo dolls. And they said, we want you to express your feelings about your partner with the pins in the dolls. And the people who had the lowest blood sugar had more than twice the number of pins in the dolls. Whoa. And my wife, she gets this thing we call hangry. If she says, I'm hungry, pay attention. Because it means her blood sugar is dropping and she does get more irritable. So could it be a head injury from the past? Could it be you didn't sleep well? Could it be low blood sugar? It's also some psychological things. In the past, you were hurt, shamed, or disappointed, um, or others modeled anger for you. You grew up with an angry dad, or you grew up with an angry mom, and they taught you how to 
model. They modeled that behavior for you. Um, some of the triggers for the angry dragon, anything that reminds you of hurts, shame, or disappointment. Or what I often see for men is when they get overwhelmed with words or you want them to take responsibility for something that they're not willing to take responsibility for. And often because male and female brains, I've published studies on this, they're wired differently. Um, you know, a woman, and could be a man, is very good with words. And during an argument, the other person just feels overwhelmed and basically their brain short circuits and they explode. And how the angry dragon shows itself, irrational rage, irritability, easily frustrated, rude and inconsiderate. You express your anger in actions such as bullying, belittling, annoying, being disobedient, blaming, fighting, punishing, name calling, or in a passive aggressive way, stonewalling. So how do you tame it? That's the promise. Tonight. So recognize if it's an issue for you. And if it's not an issue for you, but you know someone who this is an issue for, send them this video. So no anger can be good if it's directed positive, positively for present day reasons. When you feel anger, ask yourself if the problem is really now or is it something in the past? Be aware of your own danger signs before your anger is about to blow. It's one of the things I work with my patients. When do you sense it? Are there warning signs in your body? Um, common warning signs, your heart rate goes up. Your hands start to sweat. They get cold. Your muscles get tense. So my neck might hurt. You get goosebumps, dizziness, or confusion. Now, when you feel these symptoms, I want you to take 10 deep breaths. So before you say anything, before you do anything, get control over your breathing. This is so important. When you feel like you're gonna say that mean, hurtful thing, or you're gonna lash out, what I want you to do is take 10 breaths. And I want you to do it in a very specific way. Three seconds in, hold it for a second. Six seconds out, hold it for a second. So that's a total of 11 seconds. And if you do that 10 times, it's a minute and 50 seconds. It's not even two minutes. And during those breathing, during those breaths, I want you to ask yourself, what's my goal in this situation? What's my goal in this situation? Because if you can just stop, get some oxygen to your brain, activate your frontal lobes, what's my goal, your reaction will be so much more helpful. And um, lashing out to children, that doesn't help children. It scares them. And the problem with the brain is it has memory. And they are very impressionable and it's something they may remember for the rest of their lives. And a lot of parents forget how they acted when they were stressed, when they were overwhelmed, when they drank too much. And you don't want to leave those memory traces um, in your child's brain. Um, taking a time out, time out is so important. Um, If you can just get away from the situation for even just a couple of minutes, 
breathe and ask yourself, what's my goal in this situation? You're much more likely to act in a way that's helpful. Take a walk, get some of the excessive energy out. Know when to seek help. Sometimes anger, like I talked about, comes from brain systems that have been hurt or are dysfunctional. We can see those on the scans. And whenever I deal with someone where temper is a big problem, in my mind, from a brain perspective, I'm thinking about three systems in the brain. And I'm like, so describe the anger for me. And what I'm looking for is it is, is it impulsive? They just got a thought and they acted without thinking. So they have low frontal lobe function. So the front part of your brain watches you. It helps you with things like focus, forethought, judgment, impulse control, organization, planning, empathy, learning from the mistakes you make. And low frontal lobe function can come from a head injury or it can come you inherited ADD and you tend to be um, distracted, disorganized, short attention span um, and impulsive. And so that is something we can treat. So is it impulsive? Is it compulsive? You get a thought in your head and you can't let it go. Now, a lot of people who are compulsive will actually say they're impulsive, but I separated impulsivity is you get a thought and you just act on it. Compulsivity is you get a thought and you have to act on it. So you think about it over and over again. And what I often see is their cingulate gyrus deep in your frontal lobes works too hard. It's like the gear shifter gets stuck and, uh, and these are the people who get upset when things don't go their way. And you'll also notice they're worried, rigid, inflexible. They tend to hold grudges. And if things don't go their way, and then, so impulsive, compulsive, out of the blue for little or no reason. These people often have dark, evil, awful thoughts. And it comes from hurt to often their left temporal lobe, especially the amygdala and hippocampus, the fear and mood memory centers deep in the brain. And when you hurt those, and unfortunately they sit right behind a sharp bony ridge that is easily damaged in head trauma, that when you damage them, they can explode. And it, you just look at them like, why the heck did that happen? And the term we use, the diagnostic term, is called intermittent explosive disorder. Now, what the hell does that mean? It means you explode intermittently. So I'm not really a fan of the diagnosis. It just tells you what's going on. It doesn't tell you what causes it or even what to do for it. But in my experience, nearly 100% of the time, intermittent explosive disorder comes from damage to one or both of your temporal lobes. So it hurts this almond-shaped structure deep in your brain called the amygdala. And they may be, the, so knowing which system helps us know what to do. If you have sleepy frontal lobes, we might stimulate them either with the stimulant we use to treat ADD with or stimulating supplements like rhodiola or ashwagandha, ginseng, green tea. If it's your cingulate works too hard and you're worried, rigid, and flexible, things don't go your way, you get upset, we use serotonin enhancing strategies like saffron. Uh, we make something called happy saffron I've talked to you about before. Um, serotonin mood support, 5-HTP, L-tryptophan. Do not put those people on a high-protein, low-carbohydrate diet because you'll make them mean. They'll concentrate better on the things that upset them. Um, the impulse of people do better on a high-protein, low-carbohydrate diet. And the temporal lobe people, we actually may use anti-seizure medications or um, supplements like GABA, um, or taurine to just stabilize the function in the temporal lobes. We make something called 
GABA calming. So know your type. You can always go to brainhealthassessment.com, know your brain type, which then will lead you to supplements that may be helpful to you. Of course, you should always talk to your doctor. But if you are struggling with anger and irritability and these simple tips help you, that's awesome. But if it's more complicated and it's really beginning to mess with your life, either your relationships, how you feel about yourself, with your work, you should come see us at Amen Clinics. And for some reason, this week just went pop. The phones rang off the hook. Um, I think it's because people are just tired of being at home and they're really reaching out to get the help they need. Um, Let me close this with a couple of affirmations I'll leave for you, but also a story at um, an an attorney group that worked uh, with me um, that managed my literary contracts. Um, There was uh, a man there that just had a really bad temper. He was a very um, valued member of the team, but in meetings, he'd just explode and act completely inappropriate. And they were going to fire him, but they also represented me. And so they ended up sending him to me to look at his brain. And he had damage to his left temporal lobe. And on some simple medicine and supplements, he did great and is still um, working at that firm. So without the proper intervention, uh, being angry and irritable can clearly ruin your life. Um, There's a question about gabapentin. Is it the same as GABA? No, gabapentin, which I like, I've used a lot of it over the years, is a medication. It's an anti-seizure medication that I use a lot for anxiety, irritability, and pain. GABA is a supplement, and they both attempt, at least, to work on the same system in the brain. GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. What that means, it's a chemical that calms things down. And uh, if, if you have issues with anger and it's been part of your life, somebody should look at your brain. At Amen Clinics, we do a study called Brain Spect Imaging that looks at blood flow and activity. And our, our work with anger and irritability has just been so satisfying. So many, you know, often teenagers, it's like a lot of childs, it's like, please, I don't want to deal with an angry teenager. Well, I like them because I want to know why and what we can do to help you because of all the patients I've seen, they really didn't like acting that way. And so if you have intermittent explosive disorder, somebody should look at your brain. Um, So let me give you some affirmations. I express my anger in ways so that others can hear. Because when you're yelling, nobody hears you. I accept responsibility if my anger has hurt one. Saying sorry is so important. I direct my anger appropriately. I do not use anger to scare or frighten other people. That's a bully. Um, I express my anger in words, never physical actions, unless someone I love is threatened. I hope this is helpful for you. Um, You know, you can read more about this in The End of Mental Illness or my book, Change Your Brain change your life. Have a great night. The website is amenclinics.com. We don't have a clinic in Canada, but we do have a clinic uh, outside of Seattle, Washington, in Bellevue, Washington. I think about a quarter of our patients actually come from Canada. Okay, take care.